The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Carson Newman falls 78-72 to Lincoln Memorial as we bring in the coach of the Lady Eagles, Mike Mincy. Coach, we knew that this game would not resemble anything what it did last Wednesday, but the first half, LMU had a high efficiency rate from the floor. You dug yourselves a hole. Uh, what was the key in that first half to, to them getting off to a big lead? Well, I mean, I think a lot of it was our shooting. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know because I didn't, wasn't able to go back and look, but I would almost imagine that that first half was probably the worst shooting half we've had in this gym maybe since I've been the head coach. I can't think of another game where we shot as bad. And it was weird kind of stuff too, like threes that were going in, down and coming out, um, layups that were missing, just little things that, you know, they just drain your energy. And, uh, and, and you know, for LMU, like the other night when they were missing a lot of their shots, it was draining their energy, and we were gaining energy, so it flipped. The, the, flip, the, the script was flipped a little bit, and, uh, you know, I could tell a different team out of them because, you know, we're missing bunnies and we're missing threes that were going, you know, good shots. They just weren't going down, and then they were moving much faster on, the, on, the, on their offensive end with a more confidence um, in, a, in a lot of regard because they're making a few shots and we just couldn't buy one. Let's move forward to the second half because mm – -hmm. They, they are able to take advantage of, of a few different sequences. You get back into the game, and it feels like you're not able to fully get back into the contest. Mm -hmm. But then you make a run. You tie it up at 49. They score 13 in the next 17. How do you explain what happened in maybe that four or five minutes? Well, we came stretch? out, you know, what we outscore them by eight in the fourth quarter uh, or in the third quarter, and, and, and we were getting some things that we needed, um, getting some necessary stops. But then once we got back, then our offense goes quiet again, and um, you know they have the capability of going small. It's kind of like what got us up there. Um, and once like five and 15, you know, once they get the mismatch they want, whether it's from the outside or inside, they were kind of taking advantage of that. Um, and then we decided, do you want to stay big or do you want to put Harley at the five and go small? So it just really put us in a predicament there because we just weren't getting a lot of production out of our size in terms of near the rim. Uh, so. You know, why did it go awry at that point? You know, until I go back and watch film, I couldn't tell you. But it just felt like that, uh, you know, their energy level was much greater on that end, and we struggled, it felt like, for most of the game in terms of our offense. Carson Newman loses to Lincoln Memorial 78-72 to as the Lady Eagles drop this contest. Let's talk about two positives, Addison Bird and Braylon Weichel, 49 of the team's 72 points. Why were those two so efficient? Well, Bird's in here shooting a lot. Well, those are probably the two guys that probably put the most time into our gym shooting. So I'm not surprised to see them make the most shots. You know, Braylon tried to carry us and put us on our back a lot of times. Um, you know, especially she didn't, wasn't, wasn't completely trusting her shot, and she's trying to get in there and get to the rim. They were closing things off. Um, you know, we weren't able to draw a lot of fouls tonight. You know, there was only 13 fouls called on them. And um, so sometimes because that stuff was closing out, she wasn't getting the fouls that we normally get and begin to free throw line, so it was kind of tough there. But, but for her to shoot almost 50% from the field to end that way, certainly Bird shoots way better than that. Um, you know, if they hadn't shown up offensively, we'd probably been in more trouble. Let's go to the closing out portion of the game. Uh, you're able to make that run. You do miss a layup down the stretch. Whether or not that would have made the ultimate difference, maybe not. What's the lesson? from today's game overall, knowing that you had a chance on your home floor mm -hmm. for this entire tournament that you'll probably never get again, yeah. that yeah. you do not take advantage of it despite the fact that you had about maybe seven or eight minutes of wonderful basketball and 30 minutes of uh, below average, uh, below your average yeah. basketball. I don't know what you learned from it. I mean, we started out okay. Um, you know, Skyler goes down with an ankle injury. Uh, that's not the reason we lost. I think it affected our team for some reason. Because at that point that she got hurt, like you noticed, I kept subbing all kinds of different people. I was just trying to find a lineup that we could. But LMU, you know, they typically play zone. They came out and was guarding us man-to-man. -man, and we usually play great against a man-to-man. -man. So they came out, got man-to-man. -man, and then we just got real stagnant down there. In terms of the end of the game, I told them I appreciate their effort. That they never quit. You know, they were going to continue to try to get back in this game. You know, if the layup would have gone down, it would have been a two-point game with about 30 seconds, I think, still left. Changes a little bit. You know, puts a little bit more pressure on the free throws. But, uh, you know, they got at least got the steal, didn't get, didn't get to go down. But, um, 
we try to keep that off their mind that you could potentially play three games here to win a conference tournament. Um, doesn't happen, you know. I don't know. The, the first half I can't explain. I, I've, I've never seen a shoot that bad in our facility. You know, you got to give LMU some credit with their defense. But a lot of the shots we were taking were open. They just weren't going down. So uh, what we'll do from here, I don't have any idea. Obviously, we'll wait on the uh, the regional, which will also be here. Um, you know, we've had a good season. We're 15 and three. I uh, got some good wins under our belt, so so we'll see if we fall in that top six or not. That'll be my final question for you. It's going to be a long six days, wondering what's going to happen without the rest of the tournament, especially with Anderson winning and now Lincoln Memorial. One of those two will be in the conference championship game. What is your pitch to the NCAA committee for this team to make sure that you secure one of those six spots in the regional? Well, I mean, we've talked about this. You know, we're the regular season champ of our league. Uh, it was a hard fault regular season with the games that we had to go on the road and, and, and we won some really tough games on the road. Um, some teams that are ranked in that top 10, you know. Um, but we do have three losses there to teams that I don't think they're bad teams. They just have their records don't really show how good they actually can be. But, um, you know, do I feel like that we have a resume worthy of an NCAA tournament? Yeah, I do. I mean, and that'll probably be shown um, when you look at what we've had to do from a from a a season standpoint, uh, you know, did we cough one up? Yeah, we did, but, uh, you know, it was an abnormal performance by us. And, uh, you know, for our kids' sake, I hope they get another opportunity, um, you know, to get back on this floor and compete because I can assure you that what happened in that first half uh, today will not happen again. Coach, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you on Sunday. Right, thank you, Michael.